Hey everybody, Clint Crow, Century 21 Crow Realty. Welcome to the first episode of our new video podcast, Clint Crow Real Estate Show. We may come up with a new name later. If y'all have suggestions, please feel free to send them. Uh, it's not the most original name, but it's what I've got and it's what it's about. We're, uh, we're talking about real estate. Talking yes. about real estate business, real estate company, real estate market. We're going to talk about everything related to real estate. We're going to have some fantastic guests on. We're going to have a lot of our agents come on. And today, for our first episode, we have got our one and only operations manager for Century 21 Crow Realty, Ms. Casey Peer. Welcome, Casey. Hey, thank you very much for having me on well, your new podcast. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for coming and doing it. This is something we've been working on. I've been talking about for a pretty long time that you know, we hadn't quite gotten to yet. We have a lot of plans, a lot of ideas that sometimes it takes longer to get them to come to fruition than what we would like. But, uh, but anyway, I'm very thankful that you're here, not just today, but every day. So thank you for all you do for us and our company. Let's talk about where we are. First of all, we're in the, uh, this is our new studio. Right. At the new building. Um, On Cleveland Street in Locust Grove. Yeah. It's just something about, I just like calling it the Cleveland Street Building. I don't know what it is about it, but this is our new place. And it's it's really, the more time we've spent here, I think it's really become more uh, more home. The, I love the, it. The more time I spend in it, the more mm-hmm. attached I become to the mm-hmm. building. The location, the feel, the little nuances of the building. It's just, it's just such a cool building. It really know? is. And so one of the things I know when the first time we looked at it, the first time we came in and looked at it before we even bought it, was coming through here and I saw this room and you're like, this would make a great studio. And it's uh, because you knew I wanted to do the podcast and some other recordings. And so we've got, you know, this, this area here where we could do this, but there's some other, some other scenes in here that y'all can't see some, the brick wall, the really cool exposed brick and some other stuff. So I was very excited about, about this room, but really about the whole building. Hopefully y'all won't hear, I'm hoping that we're far enough away and we've got enough technology in here that you won't hear the construction, but we are neck deep in construction Yes. next door. This part, which was the, the auditorium really didn't need a lot of work. It's going to be great for training and other seminars and doing different things that we're going to do in here and different events. But the upper half of the building needed to be retrofitted. And so we are a little bit. We are there now. We have <laughs> torn out everything that was there and rebuilding all the walls. So if you hear any uh, hammering or shouting or nail guns, we apologize. That's just uh, what, what's the saying? Please excuse our progress. That's right. <laughs> but it won't be long. No, they're moving like right along. I mean, they started the demo right after Christmas, right? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. And um, had it pretty much torn apart <laughs> in uh, two days, two and a half days, filled yeah. up three dumpsters worth, I think. And then we had a few, you know, like you mentioned, the more time we spend here, the more kind of it becomes, it more feels like home. Even we're uncovering some things, some maybe some small issues, nothing crazy, but it still just makes me even love it more. Maybe not as much you because you have to spend the money on the repairs. But I love where it is. There's so much activity around us. You know, this road gets a lot of exposure and traffic and it's just a really beautiful building. And I'm super excited about the changes we've made and mm-hmm. what it's gonna be. And and I just love it even more every time I come. Yeah, and I, you know, there, there have been some things we've found, but it wasn't necessarily unexpected. I mean, this right. place was built in 1887, I That's think. That's what the tax records date back to like 1904 but then when they've pulled some like with main street locust grove and the historic locust grove they've got records that date back to 1986 i mean 1886 not wow. 1986 yeah. so 140 ish years old is that right it's close it's a lot yeah it's a lot of years a lot of years <laughs> so that's 14 <laughs> these same four brick walls 30, 137 years yeah so yeah, so you know, you expect that you might need to shore up a floor joist or two, sure. or you know, you some might termites to, have lived here for a while, yeah, probably. You, you <laughs> might want to you might want to replace a floor joist or two, but that's you know, the cool thing about it is the way the build is constructed and the the structure of it. There's really no load bearing walls and all the posts and everything. When I was able to look under the floor, there's such a fantastic foundation mm-hmm. that they are resting on that uh, you know coming in and. Popping out a couple of floor right. doors and replacing those has been really easy. So making um, things a little bit more solid. Yeah, and it's it's going to be able to serve us for a long time to come. And mm-hmm. it's just it's such a you're right. It is such a cool building mm-hmm. just to see some of the 
the stuff in here and think about, you know, what they did and see some of the old pieces that we found after pulling down some walls, some of the old tags from where they used to make things. Here. Right. The stuff. upholstery and furniture and stuff here. And then we yeah. found what looks like a chimney, yeah. you know, that's just kind of up there floating yeah. in the air Sitting now. Behind a wall, yeah. just a, a brick <laughs> chimney just kind of hanging there. Yeah. It was behind a behind a wall where they probably used to have some big pot-bellied stoves that probably that, went on either side because the hole come out <clears> that <throat> comes out both ways and so i would love yeah. to take that cap off because it looked like a really cool piece of metal yeah that, you know yeah it, it's there's just a ton of really cool stuff so it's mm -hmm. and we're just getting started but i'll tell you the plans that that we've got the construction they're doing now now that we're seeing walls going up and how it's going to lay out, it's going to it's be cool. so cool. It's I am sad that we're putting walls back up, though, because I tell you, when the demo, <laughs> like it was like, I don't know, Saturday night fever feeling to me, just completely open and like I wanted to put roller skates on and just skate through the whole building. That's what I was thinking. Right? I, you know, it was, I, in fact, I think I even mentioned that to Thomas when we were in here looking at it, when all the walls were down except the posts, uh, the wood floors and stuff reminded me, I went to a... a a daycare when I was young, which was not 1886, but you know, pretty close, close, <laughs> close to 1886. But it had a wood floor skating rink in it. Oh yeah, and uh, and I looked, I was like, that's exactly what it reminded me mm -hmm. of, and uh, I thought how cool it would be to strap on some roller skates and skate around here, but then. There's a lot of poles. There's a lot of support posts. So yeah, and the floor know. is a little bit uneven, so that may not have been fantastic. And it might have been more exciting. Clinton did turn fifty, and so yeah, it may not have been the best idea to put him on skates. Um, it probably would not be the best idea to put me on skates. Yeah, I think the the potential upside is not worth the the right. considerable downside that yeah. would come from that. So yeah, yeah. That's probably good thinking. So we put up some walls to keep yeah. me from wanting to go skating. That's um, okay, but it would have been cool. Yes. It was very cool to look at it all open like it like it originally was when they were doing manufacturing and stuff right. here to see the big open space. I could almost see workers in there just, you know, working. And I'm so excited. I know you were excited about very it. Much. Um, all the staff and the agents, the entire, everybody here is excited about it. And it's going to be fantastic. So hopefully you can come. When we get done, we're going to have a lot of events here. We'd love to have you come to some of them. Speaking of that, talking about some events and different things, we've been doing a lot to get ready for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, not just this building. We bought a, another building down in Macon uh, yep. a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That office we have down there, we uh, it was a good space, but it didn't really fit the feel of our company. Mm -hmm. you know, it, the space was a More very corporate. functional space, but very corporate. Yeah, so uh, you know, we found that building down there, and it's right in the heart of kind of downtown, down from Society Garden, if you're familiar with that, and, and Macon kind of a a little mom and pop shop, some restaurants, an eclectic little area right there. It's just a really, a really cool spot. I know after the closing the other day, we went, uh, a couple of us went and had pizza at a little pizza place mm -hmm. down there. And you walk in and there's just like crazy chandeliers hanging from the ceiling mm -hmm. and stuff. Just, just really, a really cool vibe. And um, I'm, I'm really excited about that. That building is going to feel more like us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to do some stuff down there. So uh, we've been working. 2023 has been... A year of investment. I think so. And, I think and strategic planning for yeah, growth. maybe strategic planning and maybe um, thinking about where you want to be in the future. I know for me, twenty twenty three was busy. I mean, they all are, but it was extra busy. It felt like um, you had a baby. I had a baby. I didn't take off work. I don't take off work. She don't take off. But work. I did go on a long trip. We took the month of July and traveled, which is is great. That's one thing that I love about you know what I do. But then also too, with that all of that business and everything came kind of a little bit of maybe. I don't know the word I'm looking for necessarily, but I wasn't like fully, I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't there. I was yeah. feeling kind of just, you know, what do we do now? And I think especially this building and then we kind of just making fell in our laps essentially. Right. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. had been looking in Locust Grove <clears throat> yeah. for a long Mindy, time. Mindy and Amy really kind of popped on that one. It mm -hmm. popped up and they, they, they jumped on it. It was yeah. really a, a, a great find. Right. I mean, we saw it, looked at it, offered the next day under contract, you know, in no time. But I think that building and especially this one here has kind of given me a renewed sense of purpose may not be the word that I'm looking for, but a renewed vigor for sure. kind of the business. Yeah. I, zeal you know, or something is kind of back a little more bit. More zeal. Yeah. It's a great word. 
Yeah. Museal is a fun word. Um, <laughs> it's just a really beautiful place. Yeah, it has me too. Look, everybody knows, and I, I talk to folks about this all the time, the agents, and, and this year's been a little down. It's been... We're not immune at the <clears throat> management level, at the ownership level to these no. things that the real estate agents that you all are feeling every day. I mean, yeah. you know, it's up to us to um, to lead and, and be that example and be that positivity. And, and I try to do that a lot, and I think I get on people's nerves especially Clint's nerves because <laughs> no, I'm constantly no. like, it's okay. It's okay. Everything's no. okay. Yeah. No, but, but inside good. I'm it, feeling it too. <laughs> everybody, everybody needs that though. Right. right. That's, and that really gets back to the core of, of our company. What we talk about is that, that relationship with, with the agents and all of the group here. The best thing about this company, even with all the fantastic buildings mm -hmm. and all the cool stuff we've bought and done is the people we've got yeah. such a great, group of people that work here and it's the best when things start to tighten up the market is and and i've been around it long enough to know you know in it for over well over 20 years now and you know grow, having grown up around it i guess i've been i have been in and around the business almost 40 years now my mom started in the late 80s so right you know, i was like 12, 80, 86 so. i feel like you've told me 84 before so a long, uh, long yeah time. who knows it was way before you were born yeah so, uh, probably closer to when this building was born. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's just with that, you're going to have times that are really, really good. Right. And you're going to have times that are not so good. Mm -hmm. The market is not ever truly stable. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've been in a stretch, you know, on the on the upward side. For a few curve, years. And now it's started to kind of oscillate down a little bit. And that's not bad. All markets do that. Mm -hmm. Real estate market, the stock market, um, just about anything that you can think of that involves human beings mm -hmm. purchasing it is going to have some cycles to it. Right. And I think for me, and I know some of the folks that I've talked to that were around back in 08, 9, 10, 11, you start to get those feelings like, oh man, not again. Right. Those of us that lived through that was <laughs> like, that, like we never want to go through that again. And so you started to even see in little news reports and different commentators saying, is this another mm -hmm. bubble? Is this another great recession like 08, 09, and 10? Because ever since then, when we started coming out of that, we've really been on an upward trajectory mm -hmm. for years. We were due for for a little bit of a leveling. I don't even want to say a pullback, just a bit of a leveling, mm -hmm. you know? And when you're going like this and you go to this, it feels like a downturn. Especially, but. I mean, you know, 2020, 21, and 22 are, are anomalies pretty much. They I are. mean, that was just unexpected. And, mm -hmm. you know, so many different factors played into what happened in the market in those three years. And, and I don't know that anybody can judge you know, where we're going or, or what to expect based on those three years. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. I mean, it's, um, it's always hard. But here's the thing that I look at when I'm trying to figure out what I think the market's going to do. And, you know, I've been telling all of our folks, you need to take this time now while it's a little slower to invest in your business. Mm -hmm. You need to invest in your business. So when it turns and it really starts to pick back up again, you are ready to handle that. Right. Um, and we took that to heart. That's what we've done. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Buying this big building here, I mean, it's a 12,000 square foot building. It's a yeah. major investment. <laughs> uh, buying the building and, and making, those are efforts of permanency, right? First of all, you want folks to see that you're invested in the business as an agent. You don't want to go out trying to get business listings and, and buyers and you know, have one foot half in and one foot half out. Mm -hmm. That's not going to instill confidence in them. Is it a company? You don't want the agents to feel like you've got one foot in and one foot out or you're halfway out the door, you know. I, yeah. I tell people all the time, yes, I just turned 50, as you like to remind me. Thank you. Um, are, are you sure it wasn't 53? <clears throat> I think we're on year 53 no, now. No, <laughs> it's not. Stop telling people that. Um, <laughs> she had people convinced years ago that I was five years older than I really am or four it years older than It wasn't hard to am, convince anybody that at really all. Wasn't. I told one person and then it spread like wildfire. It so. did. That was, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that thought that was rude, but whatever. <laughs> um, you know, hey, I'm happy I made it this far. There's a lot of sure. times that I thought that maybe I probably wouldn't, and probably some times I probably shouldn't have. I mean, <laughs> you know, I've not always made the best choices, but... Uh, None of us do. <clears throat> but, you know, it's I've got a long way to go. Right. I, I think, you know, my dad was 81 when he quit working in the business. My mom was 79 when she quit working in the business. I don't think about getting to 62 and just quitting. You know, yeah. I, I, I love what I do. I enjoy building and growing and, and helping the agents and working with them. And I don't want to stop that. So, yeah, I'm 50. But if you think about it from that point of view, I can make it 
at least as far as my dad did. Sure. And so I've got another 31 years. We're here um, to stay, is what we you're are saying. Here, we are here to stay. That is right. <laughs> we are investing. So that's what we've been doing, getting ready for the next business. And, and the reason that I'm confident in doing that, when a lot of people are not confident in the market and what they're doing is over the past almost 40 years of being around it, I've seen so many times it's turned and gone up and down and up and down. And the one thing that has always remained consistent is people want someone to guide them, to hold their hand, to help them. This is a personal service business, and there's always going to be a need. When you are doing something this substantial mm -hmm. as buying a home uh, or buying any real estate, the biggest investment most people ever mm -hmm. make in their life, they want an expert. They want somebody there to help them, to guide them, to walk them through. It is a complicated process. It's an important process, mm -hmm. and they want somebody there to, to really help them. So if you bring that, if you serve people in that way, there's always going to be a need for that. And as long as you are providing value to someone else, there's a business opportunity. Yeah. Right? As long as you're providing value, the economics will come if you provide that value. Um, there's always going to be someone buying and selling a house. It's yeah. just what it comes down to. There's <clears throat> reasons to move. Always. There's reasons to buy. And that's the thing, too. And then when you look at it from an economic standpoint, from an actual factual standpoint, there was a thing this morning, an article I was reading in Yahoo Finance about the jobs numbers from December. Mm -hmm. were uh, 226,000 jobs when the market was expecting 173,000. Wow. And so one of the key drivers that leads to increased real estate purchasing is somebody's ability to have and maintain a job. Right. Their confidence they're going to be able to make that payment for the next 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. When the job market goes down, that's when you really worry about people pulling back and not buying because then they're not confident that they're going to keep their they're job. They're going to be able to keep their job or keep gainful employment. Jobs numbers are still high. Uh, employment numbers are good. The economy is strong and the demand is there. Mm -hmm. We've still not absorbed all of the demand that we lost from 2008 through 2012 or so. There was so much pent up demand in that time that we've not still absorbed. I looked last week into some numbers um, just in just in the 30248 zip code, so Locust Grove only. And if you're familiar with Locust Grove, there is a lot of new construction going on around yeah. here. Um, not just in like city area, you know, you've got some stuff on Peaksville happening, mm -hmm. up 155 where the Publix is, there's new construction back there yeah. even, and that's still Locust Grove. Yeah. So there's a lot of new construction. Big so, development up, Bill Gardner up through there, right? Right, there at, uh, that's right. Yeah. There's two or three of them going up there actually. So a lot of that um, skews your inventory because what happens is these new construction, it looks like they stay on the market for a long time, but it's because there's only one or two in the MLS. When yeah. you go, there's, you know, 25 houses to look at, right? So you have like a longer time in the MLS, but even with all that being said, just in Locust Grove, the months of live inventory was 4.2, I think, last month. So that's you know, you're still not at that demand, even with the yeah. rapid growth that's still happening in Locust Grove. Yeah, and at a, at a, at a 4.2 month supply of inventory, mm -hmm. you're still very well into a seller's market. Right. Um, you know, six months is, I've never really seen six months stay there, <laughs> which is really a balance, considered to be a balanced market. I've not really ever seen that. It's been one way or the other. But I know in uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, we were at 12, 13, 14 months supply of inventory, which makes my stomach hurt me yeah. to think about that again. But we're at a 4.2 now, which and means that's just in th the city. there's still not enough to, no. there's, there's still, there's still not enough supply for the demand from buyers. Um, no, especially when you look at factors like that's just Locust Grove. So that's not even all of Henry County. Pike County, where I live, their month supply of inventory is like 2.5. Yeah. So you take these neighboring counties and you put it all together across the state. I mean, you're still very low. Yeah. And and from a state standpoint, you know, I obviously we're getting ready to go back into session. And, and you know, for those of you that, that are new to this or haven't seen any of our other stuff before or don't know anything about me and maybe watching this encountering me for the first time. Is there somebody also, out there that doesn't know you? I mean, maybe one or two people. <laughs> maybe one. Of, there may be one or two lucky people that haven't had yeah, to put up with huh, me yet. Bless their hearts. Yeah, well, they're, <laughs> they're, it's about to be over now. I'm in the state legislature, state house of representatives, and so we're going back into session. And so, you know, we're not really going to tie this into the politics side of things. But we are going to talk some about real estate and politics and how politics affect real estate. Some of our guests that will kind of be talking from that angle. 
But the political side of it, and why I think all realtors should be involved, at least locally or maybe on a state level with governmental affairs, is the decisions that are made from a governance standpoint Mm -hmm. really affect our livelihoods and and the market. And we have done a good job, and others way before me have done a good job for a number of years to put Georgia in a position where our economy is in fantastic shape. Mm -hmm. We have a AAA bond rating. We have surpluses in the budget you know now there's a lot of discussion about what to do with that and everybody has ideas and and don't get excited thinking that we've got all this (laughs) extra money we can do anything we want there's never seems to be enough money to meet all the demand or all the ideas or all the requests for it kind of like my house Um, yeah it's kind of the same you know no matter how much you got there's never quite enough to meet all the demands but whatever that's like most households yeah but it is you know there our economy is thriving people are moving to georgia yeah. There's jobs being created here, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of jobs. Georgia's been the number one state to do business in nine, ten years in a row. I think we're at ten. Ten. Now. I think we're at we ten. We just hit ten. And uh, people are moving here in, in droves. Yeah. And what that means for us is there's need, going to be more demand for housing, more demand for real estate sales. You know, rates will, will level off. Mm-hmm. They'll probably pull back a little bit this year. I think most economists think that we're going to see a bit of a pullback in rates this year. And even now, rates are not, historically, they're not high. They're mm-hmm. they're lower now than they were when I first bought my house or built my house. Traditionally, they're not super high, but it feels like it because it they went up so Right, we fast. came out of, you know, and you came out of a 3%. And we yeah. refinanced, actually, for a 15-year at 2.5. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You're at a 20-year low. You know, we've had a 20-year yeah. run of abnormally low yeah. rates. Yeah. And when they started coming back up, it did, they didn't come up slowly. Right. You know, I think the Fed was very aggressive in their rate hikes, which is not always, that rate's not always directly tied to sure, but mortgage it, rates, navigate. but it does influence mm-hmm. them. And so uh, it influences bond rates and, mm-hmm. and uh, treasury rates and uh, T-bills. And, and so that affects the, the mortgage rates. And so it was just a really rapid increase, which I think made it feel worse. And it reduced people's buying power a little bit for what they could afford. But... All that being said, Georgia is in a great place. Um, Georgia's economy is in a great place. And those of us in the real estate business in Georgia, at least in this room Mm -hmm. and in this company, (laughs) are very optimistic about the prospects going forward. We are. Uh, Otherwise, we wouldn't be making the investments that we're making, the long-term investments, because I think the real estate industry is strong. The need for guidance and support and advocacy for our buyers and sellers is as strong or stronger than it's ever been. The world doesn't get less complicated. Right. These transactions don't get less complicated. No, they do uh, not. And so, <laughs> you know, that's why we constantly invest in training and research and really try to, to make sure that we're honing our weapons, so to speak, to, to make sure we can provide the best service for our clients. And as long as we do that, I'm optimistic. I think it's going to be good. I'm looking forward you know, to it. Looking forward to a yeah. new great year. Well, in and, this new you space. know, one of the things that I talk to agents and, and one of the things that I really want to incorporate into this is we're having these discussions. This is also, uh, you know, get to know Century 21 Crow Realty and our folks. That's, that's a lot of the reason I wanted to do this was to kind of introduce y'all to some of the fantastic agents that we've got in our company. And you are the operations manager you help run everything when i'm in atlanta during session you really keep everything on the tracks probably better and easier than you do when i'm (laughs) not when i am here um when clint goes into session that means casey gets a break (laughs) yeah well yeah everything everything kind of leveled off i I come in every now and then with some ideas and uh (laughs) she has to take all of that and try to package it into a reasonable presentation and something that can actually be achieved and that's She's very good at it, so I'm very appreciative. But uh, but outside of that, you do still sell some. But, I do sell some. But you also, you're making investments. I mean, you've I got do. confidence in the market. I know you mm-hmm. and Will have bought, redone several houses in the past. I think y'all just bought one what, last week. Yeah, so two years ago, I went to a Tom Ferry Summit with Megan. They talked there about investing in real estate, you know, for yourself. Before, that was something that Will really wanted to do, and it was something that I thought we would never be able to do. I mean, we were, you know, I was 
30 at that point, but we had two young kids and, and a house and these things and responsibilities. And that's just didn't seem like a realistic goal to me. But while we were there, I thought about it more. And, you know, I thought this is something like, why can't I do this? Why shouldn't I do this? So I went home and I told Will I wanted to start buying properties, either rentals or flips or do something. I wanted to do something. So that was two years ago. And we have just closed last week on our sixth property in the two years. So yeah, it's fantastic. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, to be involved in a couple of them mm-hmm. with you. And now it's just y'all, and y'all do such a good job. I told Casey I wanted to have Will on here one day. She I don't kind know of if that's a, a good idea. Bit, but, uh, <laughs> y'all, if y'all follow him on social media at all, you've probably seen Will. He is crazy. But, you know, he <laughs> likes to serve, right? That's yeah. one of the things that, that I really enjoy about our company. And it, it's not everybody, and it certainly doesn't have to be, uh, this, but we've got a lot of former military or public safety related mm-hmm. people in this company. You know, I was in law enforcement for, for a number of years. My wife was a firefighter at EMT and worked with Will mm-hmm. at the fire station. You know, and a lot of our folks have prior military or law enforcement or uh, firefighter, first responder experience. And I think that it's funny when I sit back and think about how many of those folks we have here that are drawn. But that's the kind of people that really get what we do. Mm -hmm. They understand serving, serving the community, and they understand kind of service more than self. Mm -hmm. That attitude and that type of mindset really makes a fantastic agent. And that's why I love the people we have so much, because they really, they care more about other people than they do themselves. They do. Um, You know, don't get me wrong. This is a for-profit business. Right. I got babies to feed and and grandbabies to feed sometimes. And real estate agents are type A personalities. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, (laughs) uh, it's not all altruistic, but they do care more about other people. And, and I think, they understand that, look, if you serve other people, right, put the needs ahead, it's going to come back to you, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I've seen that over the years and we've really instilled that throughout the company and the people that have come here have really been people that have bought into that. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for y'all. I'm, I'm thankful that y'all are investing in real estate. That's a good sign in any market to people that are, you know, in your mm-hmm. age bracket. Mm-hmm. That yes, you can do it. Yeah, you um, can. It's it's easier than you think. I mean, it really is. It feels like a lot, but it is easier than you think. I'd love to yeah. to sit and talk with somebody that wants to do something similar. Um, but I'm just super excited. Will's actually at that house today working on it. There'll be some videos, you know, come out because it was a mess. They <laughs> usually are, and that's yeah. you know how it goes. But he enjoys it, and we hope hope to have a pretty quick turnaround on this one. It was mostly cosmetic stuff, and we just yeah. we enjoy it. We're glad to be able to do that and and support our family in this way and we really love it yeah and I, I think it's cool part of that I always love with us what I love here is taking one thing and making it look new fresh yeah. and building and recreating and that's uh that's always a fun part of that I'll tell you the one that we did on Maddox Road that's one will is very happy with and that, he always that was incredible it that, was that a transformation was a, for sure that was a transformation but but you're right. You know, anybody can do that if they want to. Yeah, enough. absolutely. That's the thing what often holds people back are, you know, limiting beliefs. Yeah. So many of us have limiting beliefs. And honestly, now, I think as a society, we've gotten to a point to where people are always focusing more and, and telling people more what they can't do rather mm-hmm. than what they can't do. Mm-hmm. You know, we always focus on, well, you can't do that because of this. Mm-hmm. You can't do this because of other people are doing it. Right. Other there, people are doing it. There and are other people that do it. And if there's other people doing it, then then I can do it too. Yeah. Right? That's if it can be done, then I can do it. But they don't think of it this way. But you know, years and years and years ago, even before I was born. Now it was well after this building was built. <laughs> I think it was in the nineteen thirties. I don't remember exactly, so forgive me. But there was a man named Roger Bannister. Mm-hmm. And if people don't know who Roger Bannister is, Roger Bannister was the first man to run a four-minute mile. Okay. Up until that point, everybody believed that it was physically impossible for a human being to run a mile in under four minutes. And people had tried for years, and nobody could do it. And the the common belief was that it was physically impossible for a human, the way we are organically designed and Mm -hmm. created, to run a mile in under a minute, or under four minutes, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Roger Bannister convinced himself that he could, Roger Bannister did, and so in the history of never had anybody run under a four-minute mile, within the next year, I think three or four other people had done it. Yeah. And it was because all of a sudden they believed it could be done. And so... 
That's That's exactly what happened to me when we were out there. I mean, it was, you know, people have done this, but it's, it's older people. It's people that have more experience, people that have more money, people that, you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't somebody like me that could do that, but they were doing it. And and Mm -hmm. the people on the stage were doing it and they were like me. And it was like, okay, I can do that actually. Why not? And, and I think a limiting belief, and I've talked to you about this before that imposter syndrome too is big. Yeah. Everybody has that imposter syndrome. I I think that sometimes I tell people all the time when I'm talking to them, like there's still days that, that I walk into the Capitol and I walk out onto the house floor and look around and think, man, how did I wind up here? Right. Like, like, if, like somebody's going to figure out, I snu- they, gave me a, right. they gave a key card to the wrong guy Yeah. and uh, I'm not supposed to be here. But I think everybody, if you're human and breathing, struggles with yeah. that, right? You think, For sure with me. Man, I'm not supposed to be no. here. What am I I'm, doing? <laughs> I'm not supposed to be able to do this. I'm not capable of that. Right. But the thing that I found, and I've been fortunate to, to meet a lot of really cool people, over the years and be around them is everybody is the same. They're all just mm-hmm. just people. You know, we're all flawed. We all have things that we, we worry about. We all have worries. We all have things that we think are setbacks or whatever. But the people who are perceived to be most successful are the folks that have those, but do it anyway. Just keep going. And just keep going, mm-hmm. right? You just don't quit. That's what we're working on. That's what 2024 is going to be about for us. 2023 was about getting our ducks in a row, getting yeah. our house Catching in order up. to come back out and take the next five to 10 years and just annihilate it. Yep. You know, just absolutely conquer the market. And so we got set up. We took this little bit of downtime in 2023 to say, hey, What's working? What's not working? Mm-hmm. What do we need to refocus on? What do we need to? What do we need to get rid of? What do we need to double down on? Right. And and that's what we've done. And so we are going to be ready in 2024. I think the market's going to be ready. I know our agents are going to be ready. Mm-hmm. And so we're excited. We're excited for 2024. I'm excited for this new podcast. Yeah. And I thank you for being our first guest. You're welcome. I think you'll probably be like a like a guest host every now and sure. then because I don't. I don't probably want to do it to myself or by myself and sit here and talk to myself. So if there's times when I don't have a guest, I may, I may just force you to come sit. I'm and making talk a to face me. because you talk all the time. I mean, do you, I know, you need somebody to talk to? <laughs> like, <laughs> I just want to have somebody I can look at that looks gotcha. like they're listening, and you okay. do a great job of pretending to listen to me. Just so. nodding my head and smiling. Yes, that's right. <laughs> she does a great job of pretending like she's listening to me and interested in what I'm saying, which is very fantastic. Kinda. If you ever. You ever need somebody to talk to, Casey's your, <laughs> your person. So, but uh, this has been great. I, I really am excited about this. I hope that I hope folks will tune in. I hope they will get some value out of it. I hope that it will offer us an opportunity to introduce them to the fantastic people in our company. Uh, learn a bit about them and what interests them outside of here. Mm-hmm. You know, that's I think that's really a key is to getting to know the agents. But getting to know them on a personal level, like what drives them, in, because they're going to find commonalities. They may find mm-hmm. somebody that has something in common with them that, that really builds a bond and relationship with them. So I'm excited to introduce our folks to that, to bring you valuable information, hopefully somewhat entertaining. We're going to have fun. We always have fun. We'll joke and cut up. We we take what we do very seriously. We don't take ourselves very right. seriously. And I think that's what makes it enjoyable. So. We are excited. Thank you for watching. Um, This is episode one. Many more to come. uh, Take care. We'll talk soon. Bye.